Hey, welcome back. While studying about integrated circuit design, we often discuss about designing the W and Ls of transistors, but seldom do we discuss about designing resistors, and equally importantly, choosing the right resistor. Resistor design is without a doubt not as complex as other aspects of IC design. However, there are a couple of salient points that must be considered before diving right into it. In this video, I'll attempt to cover a couple of practical points regarding the same. We'll begin with a discussion regarding the sheet resistance and designing W by L of resistors through a simple illustration. Next, there are a couple of parameters that one must look at before deciding on which register to use from the handful of flavors that a modern PDK or PCD provides. We'll look at the most commonly used parameters by IC designers and understand their significance. Lastly, we'll look at the device perspective of a resistor. More specifically, why a resistor is a three-terminal structure, the structure of a polysilicon resistor, which is routinely used, and also at a compact layout strategy, which is used. By the way, if you want to learn more about a PDK, then you may check out the video in the description. That being said, let's get started with the video. Resistors in ICs are in essence thin film resistors because the current flow is confined to a thin conducting layer. Here I'm trying to illustrate a qualitative representation of a resistor with the metal contacts. We'll look at a much better representation towards the end of the video. One would apply the potential across the two terminals and would expect a current to flow as indicated by these arrows. It is common knowledge that the resistance R is rho times L over A, where rho is the resistivity of the material. A can be expressed as W times T from the above diagram, where T is the thickness of the material. The thickness is fixed for a particular technology, therefore let's absorb it into a parameter rho to obtain a new parameter called rho S. Rho S is called the sheet resistance. Technically, its dimensions is ohms, but it is commonly described as ohms per square. This is so because the resistance R equals rho S if L equals to W, meaning that if you have a square resistor. Let's see what this parameter rho S means to us as an IC designer. And before that, just a quick remark that rho S is rho over T and rho is 1 over sigma, sigma being the conductivity of the material which is approximately expressed as Q times the mobility of majority carriers times the activated dopant density N. Now let's assume that you are designing a band gap circuit and you require a resistor of 2 kilo ohms. You would first go to the PDK or PCD and look for the sheet resistance of the different flavors of resistors that it offers and then decide an appropriate resistor. What I mean by that is suppose you have two resistors with sheet resistances of 10 ohm per square and 500 ohm per square. Now assuming all other parameters are the same, you would go with the 500 ohm per square resistance because that would save you area over the other resistor. For instance, the PDK might tell you that the resistance varies between 400 to 600 ohms per square with a nominal value of 500 ohm per square. Since you want a resistance of 2 kilo ohms, you know that the L by W ratio should be 4. This brings us to the second important parameter of interest, which is the matching coefficient. It is typically described in terms of percentage times micrometer or percentage along with the W and L that they use to characterize it. We know that as area of the component increases, the matching improves. This will help us choose the exact W and L according to the matching that we desire. By the way, if you want to match two resistors of values R and 2R, then don't just increase the L of the 2R resistor to 2 times L, but rather keep the same unit length and width and replicate this unit resistance two times. You don't have to manually duplicate it, 
there is a parameter for the number of series components that lets you do it. Another tip is to be careful while using minimum W resistors as they can experience resistance variation and mismatch issues. Great, so we discussed the sheet resistance and the matching coefficient. Another important parameter is the temperature coefficient. It is generally represented as TEMPCO or TCR. TCR is defined as 1 by R times dr over dt and it captures the temperature variation of the resistor. It is about 500 ppm per degree centigrade for polyresistors. In SPICE, the temperature variation of resistors is generally modeled as the nominal resistance at the nominal temperature times 1 plus the linear temperature dependence plus the quadratic temperature de dependence. The nominal temperature is usually around 300 Kelvin and TCR2 in this figure is the quadratic temperature coefficient. We generally look at just the TCR and then decide. For example, in a band gap circuit where you want the resistor to be very accurate, you would choose a resistor with the least TCR. A modern PDK would offer positive temp core resistors, negative temp core resistors and even close to zero temp core resistors. These of course require much more complex fabrication and thus are more costly. Let's say that you are designing a resistor ladder and want to obtain an accurate voltage. It isn't hard to say that if we choose the same type of resistors, then their temperature dependence would cancel out to the first order, leaving us with a temperature independent voltage. Another simple hack to reduce the temperature dependence of a resistor, if you don't want to use the zero tempco resistor, is to put a negative tempco and a positive tempco resistance in series. This might help to lower the temperature sensitivity. Now before looking at more parameters, let's first understand why the resistor in ICs are three terminal structures through the example of a polysilicon resistor. Polyresistors are commonly used because they are more linear and offer lesser parasitic capacitances than other types of resistors. The structure is as shown. You have a silicon substrate on top of which you have STI that is shallow trench isolation which is essentially SiO2. Next you have a thin polysilicon film on top of the oxide with metal contacts. These contacts might be silicided to reduce the contact resistance. You apply the potential across the VL and VR terminals and the current would flow through the polysilicon film. It is roughly an upside down MOS system where instead of the metal, you apply the potential to the silicon substrate. The potential of the substrate VC modulates the depletion layer width which changes the cross section across which the current can flow. Thus, you have a voltage dependence on the resistance value, which is captured by the parameter VCR. Which is equal to 1 over R times dr over dv, where V is the difference of VC and the average potential across the resistor. Resistors in ICs are actually non-linear because they are prone to higher order effects like velocity saturation and self-heating. Before we conclude this video, I would like to mention one simple layout concept. Suppose you want to fabricate a large resistor and you design the L and W values as per the parameters we discussed today. It might happen that your L would turn out to be very large. 
So when you lay it out, it would look something like this. But we can of course have a more compact, area efficient layout. Resistors are typically laid out in a snake-like fashion, something like this. The length of the resistor is shown in red. Note that there are some DRC rules for the minimum separation between these regions. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks if you made it so far and see you in the next one.